Okay, everyone, good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here for this round. And without any further ado, we'll get the round going. So could I kindly invite the Prime Minister to come to forward to make opening comments. Yeah. Yeah. Today what we see from a status quo actually we're in a very like, rapid changing society which has already, already moved on from the old convention we have in the past. So we see from the status quo that actually criminalized the act of a statutory rape which they define as the, a consensual sex between an adult and a minor. And they believe that in the past because the children are innocent, because they are not so experienced and they are not so informed that being into this sexual, uh, sexually engaged with an adult is definitely something bad. However, we say, ladies and gentlemen, this is not longer the case in the status quo. We see from a status quo that our minors, those who are under the legal age of consent, they actually ex are, are more exposed to a, a world and they're more exposed to what is exactly going on within like a relationship and what is exactly going on like the sexual engagement or whatever it is. It is actually something very normal, and this is high time we believe that we should tone down this very specific issue by decriminalizing statutory rape. So policy, are, my policy is very going, uh, is very simple. We are going to abolish this ruling. On the contrary, we are going to just going to have uniform regulation on this specific issue. So first of all, why we criminalized it in the past, and why necessarily sex with minors is not something prim, uh, like have the criminal liability. So first of all, what are the concerns for the people in the past who criminalized something in the very first place? They are concerned of a manipulation from an adult because the children, they are not being able to judge on their own rationality. They are not independent yet to be responsible for, for themselves. For example, how, how are you going to be responsible for yourself if you are like, uh, have an unexpected pregnancy at a teenage, a teenage stage, right? So that were the concern of the really? past ages. Really? However, in the status quo, with the upgrowing, uh, upgrowing information, uh, information age, basically you could get any specific information about sex, willingly oh. now or unwillingly from any channel that you could possibly have in the status quo, internet, uh, textbook, and uh, parents' education, movies, everything, right? And what is more, we see that is another thing being unfair in the status quo is that uh, having uh, the sex between minors itself is actually okay, but but when it comes to in comes to uh, context of between minor and an adult, it become problematic. And in the uh, in the uh, in the context of two minors, they believe that you know puppet love, people are just the same. However, the calculation changed because the adult may possibly manipulate over the minors in a great sense. So that is why we see this assumption of this very specific regulation in the first place is unjustifiable. And secondly, what makes an act a criminal act, right? We see the criteria is based on the severity of this act. How bad is it to the social value and the social good in the first place? We do understand that in the old convention, they believe that this is something that uh, God, for God's sake, right? You cannot do that because it offended all the old sacred, uh, sacred thing that uh, the church has been endorsing you to. However, in the status quo, the influence to the society is not that bad. How, uh, we, we regard uh, normally people who perceive this as some very normal situation of simply having a relationship between people from two different age groups. And age is simply a number, not necessarily equal to the rationality and the level of intelligence, the, uh, the ability to judge of one single individual being, even if they are 14, even if they are younger or whatever it is. So that is why we say in the status quo, the criteria for the, uh, the cri uh, I will take you in a second, what the criteria for uh, to keep keeping this issue into a criminally punishable crime, we believe that that is unfair. You disagree, sir? Can you tell me why, before the age of 18, when you even want to sign a contract, you can't, and you have to have the endorsement from your here, here. legal guardian? Sir, so, when you're actually signing a contract with that, uh, with uh, you need to like supervision or endorsement for a parent that closely related to the economic benefit and that may probably come a lot part from your parents in the very first place and even if you are economic independence right and it won't be that hard for you to get a uh, get a cons 
uh, get uh, the parents' support in this very specific issue. However, this is totally a different case in this sta in the status quo, yeah, yeah. with or without parents' consent into this very specific issue. This is a punishable crime. So that is why the place we found very unfair to begin with. And uh, last layer of analysis, why the minors have changed and they're different from the old times. As I told you before, they are actually growing up in this upbringing with more openness into sexual engagement. And what is more, we say that the relationship between a minor and an adult is just as normal as any other romantic relationship we could possibly have in the status quo. It's simply to affection between two people, uh, two people, they, uh, they uh, reach the stage of uh, further intimacy, so that is why they go deeper into the process of sex, and that they believe it could like uh, make their relationship into next step, next stage. We don't feel this is something uh, this is something necessarily that bad because we believe in children their own uh, the minors own ability to tell what is the thing they wanted and what is the thing they don't. However, sit down when they they might possibly question us like. What if the children are not being exposed to the world that much? And what if they are not legally sit down, uh, liable for themselves in the very beginning? We say that is not the thing. We see the status quo. Many children, they have built up their own uh, values toward the world. They might probably criticize the Obama government at their age of seven. And their value of world has been long shaked. Sit down. Uh, as long, as long, uh, ever since they were born. So that's why we say this, uh, this, uh, this relationship is not something that abnormal in the first set. And lastly, why we still achieve a goal of protection in our specific, in, this, uh, in our specific proposal. So first of all, we see that this act is actually rendering the responsibility to the adult in the very first place. By, by decriminalizing this issue, we are bringing this matter into the, onto the table by recognizing their relationship in the first place. On, uh, what, what is further, we are pushing them to be responsible for minors because they are the only, they are the mature world ones in this very specific relationship, and they sh they show the responsibility further to carry on this relationship from function uh, to function. So that is why we say uh, by having this very specific proposal, by rendering this obligation obligation of. Uh, be responsible for minors and may the minors be responsible for themselves and actually achieve a better goal of protection in our case. So that is why we strongly propose. Thank you very much to the Prime Minister. Now to continue the debate, I'm happy to invite the leader of the opposition. Here we have Madam Speaker, on opening opposition, we'll bring to you. Uh, in my speech, I'll bring to you three substantial arguments. One is the current recognition of the uh, different different stage of development of human and the different legal consequences and the importance of keeping this recognition. And secondly, I will try to characterize these minors to you and uh, and explore to you how they are vulnerable to this regime proposed by the government. And thirdly, is the characterization of sex and the permanent effect of it. My deputy will further tell you harms to the minors themselves, both psychological and physiological, and also the societal backlash brought by such policy. But before that, three points of re rebuttal. Firstly, it's pri uh, the Prime Minister's assertion that we have moved on as a society and we have so much exposure, so much more exposure than the past time that minors, they are no longer minors, they can form their own understanding of the world and they can be fully responsible for the actions. We dispute with that because we, we argue that even if you have more exposure, it doesn't mean that you have more capacity to actually understand, digest or absorb these exposure. We, we say that for the young age, it's like for an eight, eight years old, even spending an hour watching the world news doesn't mean that he will understand these world, worldly issues as the same way in like the 20 year old people. We say that the capacity is built through the process of education and we, on the opposition, we do value the process of education in helping these minds
China to form their own understanding. And secondly, the Prime Minister further went on to say, give us the example of like, once these um, miners can form their own values, different values, they can be fully accountable. We challenge on the premise that are these own values really mature enough to be fully accountable? Further, we, we will give you further examples in my speech to tell you how we think that it's important to keep the status quo and not, not until I finish my rebuttal, sorry. And, and, and actually uh, keeping the status quo in, is important as we as a society, we offer this essential protection to these miners which we think because of the tender age, we don't want them to suffer any permanent harm which they cannot bear at this stage. And thirdly, uh, it's about the, the, the idea of protection. In the last part of her speech, the Prime Minister said that today's policy will offer them better protection. Firstly, we say that there's no necessity for today's policy to pass on. We say that there's no observable harm to say that, oh, when we are criminalizing this statutory rape, we're saying that we are substantially infringing the certain parts of citizens' rights. We say that there's no observable harm to society. And what, what we think is that because of today's Policy. We, we are actually exposing a lot, a large group of these miners to the seduction and many of the evil acts of the, uh, of the individuals, certain individuals. So on to my first substantive, after the first one, is we have to look at what our legal system currently recognizes. As brought out by the POI, by our opening house, we think that they are like in the case of like signing a contract that there, there's a requirement of like parental guardianship or legal guardian and also like in the case of criminal liability we say that currently our legal system don't uh, give you the full res criminal responsibility until you reach a certain age like 18. We say that all these are in line with the status quo in the criminalization of statutory rap is that when we recognize these minors, these young individuals, they don't have the full capacity to actually make sense of what they are doing, then we as a legal system will give them the statutory yeah. exception and in this case an ex a special protection. Close it please. Okay, so why can you justify to kick out the people who love minor and have different idea from you? We say that we do give them different room for different ideas, but what we think that is that having like having a certain years where you cannot have sex is because essentially because of the protection which I will further substantiate to you in my second and third point. But more importantly is how when we keep this keep this line in the consistency in our legal system is important for our society is that once if we remove in this case the statutory rape, we are saying that okay you, you minors, you can form your own individual thoughts, you can be responsible for your Then are we saying that we don't really need to educate you and help you grow as a person? Because now essentially you have this same secondary status in this area. So why shouldn't they have like, why shouldn't the government extend this exception to other areas, say like in the, the legal uh, effects of signing a contract? So but secondly, more importantly, is why our opposition case stands is because of the vulnerability of these miners. We see that true, when time has moved on, when the explosion of information has improved our society as a well, whole, but it doesn't change the nature of these children. When, when they are not, when they, are, when they haven't really been through all these up and down in the different stages of life, we say that they are easily exploited, they are, they are easily short-sighted, or they are, they are usually driven by impulse. We say that all of these can be improved through when they grow. And we say that why, why are we creating this standard protection is we do recognize these observable, observable characteristics of these minors. We see that when they are, when these children, when they are like, when they are being exposed to uh, uh, an adult, when they, they, they may like, they may easily build an affectionate, uh, affectionate relationship and they may like easily build that trust. But we see that that gives uh, really a large area of exploitation by these uh, major. We are not giving like a moral judgment on saying that this kind of relationship is certainly wrong, but we are saying that when you consider, when you take into account the full account of 
the nature of sex and rape and the full development of these minors. We say that it is important that the law stands in the way to give this consensual sex. Because we say that on to the third point about the nature of sex is how it is permanently detrimental. Like once it has been done, like once a young girl has had sex, nothing can be undone. Like, but when we, when we, when we say that like uh, the virginity is lost, it may, this young girl, like 20 years onwards from time, she may easily regret and we say that these Shit. harm these with these harm are not immediate. These of these harms often come in the aftermath in say like when when you look at the report of like sexual indecency cases, they are not immediate. They often take time to breed. And we say that all these harm when they when they, they will substantially affect a young girl's development in their life and my partner will further explain the psychological and physiological harm on this de development of young girls. We are never more proud to oppose to today's motion. Thank you very much to the gentleman. And I'm now pleased to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to the argumentation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, although this motion is about age, it's about sex, right, but it needs some context here. So what are we talking about? What, on, what we heard from the opposition party is that the minors are always the one that is being exploited by. The minors are always the victims. However, in the recent case we see in Singapore, there was this minor prostitute, someone is uh, 17 years old, having sex with 40 over men, and therefore 40 over men are in court because of this very ruling and this is why essentially us opening government is going to explain to you this ruling is no longer in effect, uh, should no longer be in fact in our society today but before we go into uh, further exploration about age and sex let's give you some rebuttals for the op opening opposition to respond to firstly let's talk about the law the legal capacity of an individual so essentially what is legal capacity the closing opposition here raised a point that when you sign a contract, age is a fundamental criteria whether or not this contract should be honoured. It's true. However, ladies and gentlemen, it is also true that in China, as long as you are 16 years old, even though you are a minor, you can prove to be economically viable, that contract will be honoured. And also true that, ladies and gentlemen, no matter in what country, as long as the contract is in advantage to the minor, the contract is also honoured. So, no thank you. So, right now, ladies and gentlemen, the opposition party needs to show that this contract or this whatever action is in strong disadvantages to the minors itself, then, then no thank you, I'll give you a chance later. Then their claim would stand. Now, secondly, let's talk about um, the moral judgment itself. The leader of opposition tells us that there is no moral judgment whatsoever coming from the opposition party with regards to people of different ages coming into a uh, relationship and eventually sex. However, ladies and gentlemen, we find it very contradicting. Why? Because right now in our society today, we see people from all sorts of uh, races, all sorts of gender, all sorts of age coming together as a couple, developing themselves in a relationship. So essentially, what we are trying to tell you that age is no longer a barrier or should no longer be... Res uh, re uh, re oh, sorry recognized as a barrier in the social norms right now because this is essentially what Sorry. has been broken uh, and what has been heavily Sorry. practiced, no thank you. Now, moving on, let us talk about age itself. So essentially this motion here is to question why is age a certified criteria when we come to evaluating the law? So it's not just about having sex with minors, ladies and gentlemen. It's also about when you commit a mis uh, when you kill somebody as a minor, how much punishment should be dealt with to you? When you commit a, say, a contract with a minor, how much responsibility to, should be dealt with to you? Now in the past, the idea or the concept of age has always been closely related to how much maturity the person shows, how, much ab or how able the capacity of responsibility the person has. However, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, tend, we want to contest the idea by proving to you that age is just a number itself. Age has no ability to reason for anything because every single individual, no matter at what different age, is different. So in our case, as proposed by my Prime Minister, we are going to abolish this ruling 
has as a uniform ruling to say that if you have sex with anybody under the age of 18 is that is definitely criminalized, uh, criminalized we are saying that no this ruling should not stand what should stand is when people raises this issue into the court it is up to the court or up to the panel of jury to decide whether or not they admit this responsibility on either party, the minor and the adult. And this will prove further protection to the adult or to the minor. Why is that so, ladies and gentlemen? Simply because when in this case, the adult has to be more careful than before. It is not only about a, man, a minor, but has to be very certain about the partner that he or she is with. Whether or not he yeah, or yeah. she has the ability to reason, has the ability to state clearly for why they are in a relationship and why they are in the sexual encounter. Now, before moving on into sex, yes, any questions from any other bed? Yes, go Okay, ahead. when you're mentioning about the Singaporean minor prostitute, the question here is that you are not even an adult to choose your career or job or whatsoever. How come someone at the not at the age of consent has chosen such a job? Is that something in yes, relation okay, to so. their rationality? No, the... There's a question that you need to answer first. Is it why is this, why is it necessary for the society to have such a strength hold about age that you have to do certain things because you are of the age to do so? Now the. The, what we have been trying to tell you over and over again is that age doesn't matter. What matters is whether or not the individual has the ability to reason, has the ability to carry on their responsibility. So in the case of like say going to tuition jobs or taking up uh, tutoring as a, as a, as a part-time activity, we see that if you are, even if you are under, uh, if you are min even if you are a minor, as long as you have the responsibility to go honor your duty, as long as you have the capability to help improve your student's academic results, you are perfectly fine for the issue. So what is, why is it that we have to add a uh, limitation of age here? Now, secondly, let's talk about sex, ladies and gentlemen. All in all, why is this situation so critical for all of us to talk about? It's fundamental because it is of something that supposedly should be very innate to us. However, ladies and gentlemen, my partners has already told you that in present day, our society no longer look at sex like how our leader of opposition uh, has in the medieval times. Sex here, ladies and gentlemen, is just like any other normal social relationship. People get together in bars, smile, because this person is pretty, and I'm in bed. We are, not, we are not saying that this is a good thing. We are not saying that this is a bad thing. However, ladies and gentlemen, we are saying that this is what essentially is happening in our society right now. Sex is no longer an issue in an Arabic society where once you sleep with a different men, you get stoned to death. Sex is no longer some topic that parents can no longer talk about with their, with their children because they recognize that they can no longer keep them within closed doors. Things that's penetrating to, uh, after the doors are internet, are movies, sorry, you're out of time. Are, are information whereby parents can no longer stop them to. Now, the, uh, leader of opposition raised a very interesting point. They say that um, they say that it's it's different if you expose people uh, to a lot of information. The capacity itself doesn't come naturally. However, ladies and gentlemen, we beg to differ. Why? Because the teaching method is different right now. How do we teach our kids today? We don't teach them by stuffing them with information. We don't teach them by telling them and forcing them to admit one plus one is two. We teach them to evaluate from young. Yeah. So when you are in the primary school stages, you are taught to evaluate what's on the picture, what does it show, what does it tell you, what story it's about. And as young as a primary school kid can be able to do evaluating better, separating what's morally right and wrong, we see that there is no issue here whatsoever by just exposing information. Because information is not what the only... Uh, a track or what they only receive, but also the evaluation of information that we have in this society today. So ladies and gentlemen, all in all, what we want to say, firstly, there should be no age barrier, there should be no recognition of age in law, and secondly, ladies and gentlemen, sex is no longer a touchy subject. Sex is normal. Thank you. Thank you very much to the gentleman, and now we invite the next speaker, the Deputy Leader of Opposition to close the first half of the yeah. announcement. Yeah. Madam Speaker, today I'm going to do three things. I'm going to talk about 
I'm going to talk about minors. I'm going to talk about sex, and also I'm going to talk about the constructive harm that brought by today's model. That is the wrongful perceptions towards children in society, which which we think which is very dangerous. So, firstly, on the on the <clears throat> and firstly on the idea of minors, this side of the house tried to characterize as minors as being able to rationally make their own choice. But we have already told you. Minor due to the biological development and the exposure to information, because apparently by definition they had they lived shorter compared to the rest, compared to adults. They are they, they are exposed to less law, less knowledge, less experiences. That's why the law generally presumes that minors are the group that our society and the legal system needs to protect. Our my partner has already told you there's an example of why minors generally suffer a uh, lesser criminal responsibility if a minor commit a crime. And that it is exactly because we also understand that minors do not have the full capacity as adults to make their own rational choices. That's why we reduce their criminal responsibility. And there are nu numerously other examples. For example, we presume that minors do not have the ability to decide rationally whether they should uh, drink or not drink. And we also not allow minors to drive a car. It is not because that it is not because that like in the, it is it, it is it is for the protection for minors and also for the protection of society because of the presumption that these minors generally do not have enough ability to actually manipulate or actually like handle these cases and also and then they try to pop up and talk, talk to us that their model today is different their model today is to assess like every minor on call and to see whether they like have the ability we say that this model is highly like impracticable because every time first of all we doubt whether we doubt whether there is any uh, reasonable prospect for you to actually determine a minor can give a true con consent or not con true consent or not Second of all, we also say that like even if a minor apparently consent to have sex, we say that a consent may not be a true consent because the minor may be seduced to have to have consented. So. The minor can be seduced to have to, to be to be seduced for some benefit where a reasonable and rational thinking adult may may forever not consent to it. We say that all these are things that we have difficulties if they put their model into practice. And thirdly, it's also like how many how much resources are you exactly going to pour in to actually determine in every individual so, cases which minor that. actually have the real consent while the real consent is actually very difficult to determine in the first place. Don't you agree? I thought so if, if, even if you are logic to why becoming 20 or 80, those adults suddenly become so rational to every judge, okay, every we understand that our society and our legal system has to draw a line. That's why that makes our legal system work. But where the, the problem is that we, if this side of the house is not tearing down all the age of minority and all the age, like all the protections currently existing in our society, in order to make their side consistent, it is actually needed to recognize that there's a need to protect the minor as their premise. And the second place is that it is also necessary to draw a line in order to make our legal system to work. So we don't see that our case has any problem and we don't see there's any problem under the status quo. No, thank you. So now, based on the premise that minors do need some sort of protections, we now move on to the second topic today. So what is sex? This side of the house has tried to characterize sex as something like normal social relationship and that it is so, yeah, yeah. so casual. So we say it is a, a little bit wrongful characterization of sex. Even if the most liberal democracy Democracies. We we see we still see there's a lot of cultural and religious factors still prominent in these societies. Like for example, in Hong Kong, quite liberal. In America, quite liberal. But we still also pre generally so. perceive that sex is the most private and innermost thing to a person, and that actually defines your personhood. That you need to actually protect. And you have to consider very like thoughtfully before you actually consent to have sex with another person. Yeah. We say that like we say that allowing minors who generally do not have the risk to, uh, do not have the ability or full capacity of okay. rational thinking as, as adults is very dangerous. Because a wrong choice made in a wrong a, a wrong choice made during your minor can can bring great regret for the rest so, of your life, especially when that regret is actually concreted by a lot of cultural and religious factor of that society, and that we, th we therefore we generally th uh, think it is it is actually okay for you, for uh, for you to be much reasonable reasonably mature enough before you can actually consent to sex, which is the most inner uh, and most private part of your body of, of your personhood. Don't you agree? So. 
The most innate thing that you're reasoning for right now doesn't seem to apply to everything that we want to know. And more importantly, even as adults, if it's so important and they commit mistakes, why isn't the adult a statutory rate? Yes, because we say that adults have the rational thinking capacity. We, we oh, have drawn good. the differentiation for it, I think, quite quite clearly. And this side of has never like clarified, be, clarified the inconsistency that they make because they are not actually tearing down any sort of protection for minors. So we don't see how they can make themselves consistent. And now on my constructive uh, harm brought towards today's society if their model is in place, it's the wrongful perceptions towards children. We say that the effect of the law and all the effect of the policy that they are bringing today is, is that what, what, what the law generally can do to society is to send a very strong message to society and allow and to frame the perceptions of the general public yeah. in society. We see that it is actually very, uh, very bad in the, to, to the, today's case. So when the policy is in, in case, it is actually a public endorsement of people actually starting having sex with minors. The authority will allow it. The public do it, and then it forms a author first of all, authoritative endorsement, and second, also the public endorsement, which actually strengthens the perceptions that children actually have the ability to consent to sex. As I already told you before, sex is, the, is generally perceived by the last thing that you have to be mature enough to, to get consent to. We say that it's actually very dangerous because it falsely makes the people to believe that children are so mature that a lot of protections that our society generally gives to children are not necessary. For example, under the status quo, we see that parents, teachers, or adults, friends, families generally give a lot of protections and care. Care about whether children like who they, who, what kind of friends that they are knowing, what kind of activities that they are doing. We said these protections are premised on the exact premise of our side that children are vulnerable, children need some sort of protection. When we say that the law is actually enforced, telling the society that now they are mature enough, we say it, it, it easily tears down all these, the, all, all these kinds of perceptions uh, that children are actually needed, uh, children actually need protection, which is, which is actually bad for the children themselves. So for all the above reasons, please go for the opposition. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. And now to kick off the closing half of the analysis, can I please invite the Member of Parliament. three extensions from the closing government. First is, what is a contract we are talking about? Because we ought to uh, say that why those minor have ability to, to process the information the opening government talked about. It's kind of why I want to talk about the necessity to have sexual intercourse during this period. It's especially important because all opening opposition question, why not until, and, and, uh, why not wait until they come of age? We say that's too late. That's why I want to talk about, we want to say that innocent people, uh, innocent minority people, they are, uh, who are stigmatized in the status quo. First of all, engagement to the previous speaker. The previous speaker said, as a social norm, we should not allow minors to have sexual intercourse. Firstly, we said, what is the justification for them to impose those values on the individual value which is different from one person to another? Okay. You don't think any in the first place. But second, we said, as for the Christian they were talking about, Christian will not have any incentive to have sexual intercourse with the dad because they are taught that way, right? That we don't think their yeah. argument doesn't stand. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about, firstly, the contract, which is also engagement with the previous speaker and opening opposition. Opening government has said information is enough in the status quo. We say why in the case of sexual intercourse they can have the ability to process the information in the first place. Because we say the harm they're talking about is a very short term one, and the harm they're talking about is very uh, anti uh, uh, imaginable, right? Because the pain they're talking about is something that that, that same kind of pain as those might not have experienced already. They, they might have experience of having broken their bodies, right? Having broken their bones. In this situation, they can anticipate those harm and compare the harm and the event in the first. Place. But kind of we said, from the perspective of adults, adults have no incentive to like injure, injure those children because they love the children. If they Sir. injure children, they are disliked Sir. or they stigmatize by society or children. We don't think they have incentive yeah, yeah. in the first place, set the place. So on to the second extension, which is about why it is necessary for them to have sexual intercourse during this period. Yeah, yeah. We say for two reasons, it is very important. Firstly, we say that mutual trust can be cultivated through those sexual intercourse. Why is that? Because we think by by sexual intercourse, we can show the part of our bodies which we do not, which we, we never show to a person other than our partner, right? To the place. 
Kind of this, is a, this is a sign of a trust between those two parties in that place. Meaning, by the showing the naked body to the, your partner, that which is completely different from chatting or talking, to, talking with each other, yeah, you have yeah. to cultivate <laughs> that those mutual understanding, mutual trust with each other in that place. But secondly, we say that we can cultivate the mutual and continuous recognition as a form of special co community. Why is that? We say that. <laughs> by doing that, by, for example, by participating in the same activity in the very private sphere, we can recognize ourselves as a part or as a form of a special community within each other. We say in the monotonous, monotonous lives of private, uh, monotonous, monotonous lives of a partnership or monotonous, monotonous lives of, for example, those relations, it is very important for us to stimulate or recognize ourselves as a form of a special community ourselves in the place. We think it is important for them to keep their relationship longer because people should be given the right to for keep that make every single effort to make their relationship keep. We think it's very important. So for, for the sake reasons. of the children, yeah. when these children are not fully biologically developed, do you think it's really for them to say that okay, I'm going to have sex? When we are talking about the children like at the age of eight or ten, as or I have said. Adults have any single incentive to injure the children they love, right? Because they yeah, want yeah. to kill children in the first place. Sir! So, further, I want to talk about the <laughs> place. Minority who are discriminated and just let go. We're not saying. We're not saying violent pedophiles are good. We say that people who love children are good. The people who, who, who you know, make violence on children as bad in the first place. We think in the first place, it is wrong for us to discriminate certain people based on their sexual orientation. Why is that? Because we say sexual orientation or sexual preferences is a fundamental one, which, is have, which they have inherently, which they can, we pass down to society separately from the other age, from the older age. Is, um, more what we say, as I have said, it is very important for them to have intercourse with the citizens the place. Therefore, we say we should not discriminate gay, we should not discriminate LGBT, yeah, yeah. even though they have, for example, some sexual, with the, uh, like sexual orientation Sorry. different from you, citizens the place. We say in the status quo, people we want to protect are, are severely harmed, severely stigmatized by the society. Because in the status quo, we say there are some people so called pedophile or pedophilia. We say uh, uh, those, uh, those who are recognized by society as somebody who loves children. Of course, we say they are bad if they injure the children without consent. But we say, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, we, we are, not, not, we are okay, not okay with a situation in which people are discriminated, discriminated even if they have incentive to care the children, they have, even if they have the incentive to love children, even if they have no intention to injure children without consent. In this situation, we say they are, they are severely harmed by stigmatization, by associating them with violent pedophiles. We say just because you ha you for example you happen to love certain kind of children, or even just because for example you happen to love very minors, no matter how much you love the child, no matter how, no matter how much incentive for you have to care the children, you are discriminated or you're denied by society. Your inherent preferences or inherent part of part of your identity are denied by society in the status quo. We say that's bad. Because in case of the gay rights movement, in the status quo we say, uh, but in the past years, just because they happen to love the same sex people, they are discriminated or they are denied by society. By passing that, for example, in case of Netherlands or Canada, where gay, 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 marriage, has made, gay marriage law has been passed, we say we so, can change those social perceptions in the first place. Yes, closing. Is this not about gay marriage or anything when you have two adults who understand what they are doing are getting into a relationship? This is not sexual orientation when you are abusing as and I manipulating, said, creating said, fabricated consent on the children. As I have said, there is a genuine, genuine and valid consent between two parties as I explained from the perspective of children from the perspective of adults. We say if we introduce this, this proposal, what people in the society will think is like this. That of, co well, of course, there are some bad pedophiles who, for example, assault the children. So what is the different differentiation, what the distinction of, between these people, and, and, for example, uh, bad pedophiles and the people who are allowed to get sexual intercourse with the children? We say people have to di make distinction between those kind of things. People recognize those, uh, those people who, who we, we want to protect as a rational and very good person who, have, uh, who might have, so, for example, a little different sexual orientation from us, but they are still okay. We say after we take this after we introduce this proposal, we we can save those legal minority. We say it's very important for us government because we should not discriminate people based on certain kind of inherent identity or inherent thing. Therefore, in order to save the people, in order to save, those, for example, uh, like guarantee those valid contracts, we are very happy to propose it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much to the gentleman and now can I invite the member of opposition to continue argumentation for that time now.
Ladies and gentlemen, when the upper house from the opening garment, they were trying to say that sex is just like any other kind of behavior that you have in society. When the opening opposition has clearly told you that when minority process that information and when minorities start engaging, like making that kind of decision, it's a different case. What closing opposition want to bring into this debate is basically the crux of this debate. That what exactly are we talking about when we're talking about the stakeholders that is at stake, ladies and gentlemen? We want to ask a number of questions, right? Is the society changing? We would say definitely yes. So people are now more open to a lot of information. Yeah, we yeah. agree. Second issue, are there some people who might have consent when they have sex with a children or some, under 14 or something? We would also say maybe yes. We do agree that there are some who do it. But the issue exactly lies in those people who are not yeah, having yeah. that consent. That's exactly when the closing government side mentioned these people are bad pedophiles. On one hand, closing government side was trying to say, see, all these adults, they love these children, they'll be nice to them, they won't hurt them. But on the yeah. other hand, we also see so many people who are pedophiles who might hurt them, who might hurt them. Then yeah. that's when the welfare of the minority of the children cannot be neglected. Response to the extension from the member of government side. They say they can process the information, and even if they can't, the short harm will be short term. In the first place, my opening opposition has said they can't process the information. In the second place, what exactly is the short term harm? Talk about single parents. Talk about like when they need to get abortion. Talk about when their worldview is absolutely ruined by a strange daddy who is trying to give them lollipop and uh, like try to attract them, seduce them for sex, and eventually they turn into a street prostitute who, who were so much hated in society who want to seek revenge on adults eventually, ladies and gentlemen. We say these kind of changes can be long lasting. I'm not saying that every child will be like that. We're saying that even if some of them became like that, that would be a problem for society. Stop. That would be permanent harm for these children. Now secondly, right, when they're talking about the need of having children to show their private body part and in turn build this kind of mutual trust, we say they are totally reversing the, the, this whole process of loving. When people love each other, they build trust first, they, once they're trusting each other enough to show them their private body part, that's when they might want to have sex. The question here is, if I'm really a good lover, adult lover of a child, I might want to eventually say that, well, we know that there's this law, we know that I need to be careful, which is exactly what Opening Garment has told you, they want to be careful. Now, we might need to wait some time, and because I truly love you, right, I can take that. But who will have the absolute necessity of simply having sex with you now and not caring about your future, ladies and gentlemen? It's exactly these pedophiles that they are talking about. It's not a mutual trust. It's abusing of this trust that you wrongly impose on them. But thirdly, right, when they finally talk about this, like discrimination and talk about gays and LGBT community, we are fine with respecting these people, but we are definitely not fine with you giving a leeway to all the pedophiles to enjoy the kind of privilege they cannot enjoy ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, what exactly is the case from closing opposition? Now, we told you, clearly we are trying to focus on one group of people, these bad people, but why do we want to focus on them? We say law is trying to seek no compromise. Law is not trying to protect, for example, let's say, some people might want to love a child, but they can't. Yes, we do respect their right. They might do that later on. The question is, given that it's so much of a superseding, like it's so much of an overwhelming interest to protect our next generation, who is the child, the law is basically taking a zero tolerance policy and saying that we can't allow even one or very few children to be harmed in the first place. It's not about most people having rationality. It's about law saying even very few are having this problem. We still need to deal with it. Why we need to deal with it, ladies and gentlemen? Two points, basically. First point about why this is morally abhorrent coming from the guy's side of garment. And secondly, why there's a huge power asymmetry between the perpetrator of that crime and that children themselves. Ladies and gentlemen. Why is that morally abhorrent? We see the garment side, when they're actually executing such a plan, 
they are contradicting a number of social norms that we already accept in society as fundamental in our society. When you do agree that children need to follow the guidance of their parents, when you do agree that parents are legal guardian before your age of 18, when, when you go to apply for a visa, the visa officer asks your parents to sign it so that they can endorse your behavior. We say you are now allowing children to make a decision about sex. Yeah, what yeah. is sex? Sex is something that is so intimate, right? The two people get together without the parent consent, they can do it already. The question in here eventually is that you are allowing this particular behavior of sex to bypass the consent of parents. Whereas on the same time, the fundamental reason why we accept the 18 year old, sorry later, 18 year old to be recognized as an adult is that after being guided by their parents, after receiving enough education from the schools, that's when they accumulate enough experience. Now you don't need that process at, like, at all, you just want them to have sex, and without even setting a minimum age or anything, when that is happening, when a, a five-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old could be abused to have sex with an adult. We say, that's abhorrent. But secondly, right, given our trust to parents, when we trust them, we even don't allow incest, for example, to happen. Because why? Even when it's incest between two adults, right, we still think that that's wrong because there might still be abuse and power asymmetry in this kind of manipulation that happens. We say that's exactly the reason why we want to protect the child today. We don't like manipulation from happening. Why is there such a manipulation? Let's think about the psychology of these people, pedophiles, versus these children, right? When we're talking about these children, what would they see, right? The sexual information is that provided in school. Let's say before the age of 14 or before the age of 13. Most people haven't finished like their primary school yet, or at most they're in their like junior high school, right? Do they have enough knowledge to process that information? Clearly not enough. When they are only learning basic math, only learning basic literacy, that's not clearly possible. But secondly, right, when these pedophiles can basically feed them with information that's wrong to them, right? These pedophiles will tell them <laughs> that love is not something that's so scary, sex is not something that's so scary, I will buy you lollipop after sex, don't worry about that, right? So when that happens, right, we are creating fabricated consent. When you see China Chinese children, right, for the sake of buying an iPad, they can go trade their organ, not understanding the long-term consequence of selling their organ. When you don't understand that being a single parent or you going through the abortion and like ruining your whole worldview might have a permanent impact on you, they only care about this short-term fabricated consent, no longer the long-term consequence on themselves. These children are not protected. That's why we are strongly opposing. Thank you for calling. So, um, just because I have different sexual education or different preference, it does not necessarily mean I have to be kicked out from society. We recognize, we should recognize other different preferences, which are totally different, even if it is totally different from us. Because they are the also one who should be recognized as society in this occasion. This is the uh, um, clear start from the second proposition bench. I'm going to bring you three issues. Firstly, what is the consent of the nature of the consent of those minors is valid in these specific cases? And secondly, why sexual intercourse is so important topic in this debate? Why this is so um, protected in our world? Thirdly, about the school, how this proposal changes the social norm at the university in these uh, those, uh, those minorities. 
So, uh, so uh, movement part is about the nature of the concept. From the beginning of the uh, entire government case already told you, the uh, amount of information is available, uh, the amount of information is so large that at the, uh, from the beginning. Age is not the valid criteria to begin with to regulate certain action of individual. So uh, the response from the entire opposition case is two forms. Firstly, they told about uh, uh, three forms uh, from the opening opposition. They have no capacity. They are so vulnerable. They are exploited easily. Girls always regret if they give up virginity. Second is uh, two responses. Firstly, they are the those sexual um, intercourse uh, is con uh, if those sexual intercourse is conducted in a violent manner or those girls are injured, we are okay to punish them obviously because they cause the injury to those minors to begin yeah. with in this occasion. In this case, we are not talking about those bad pedophiles who are abusing those se sexual intercourse to begin with. But secondly, if that's the case, we must ban sex itself, obviously, because the males and females always have the first time to go to the sexual intercourse without any expense. In this occasion, this is not different from the children and kids and, and adults in this occasion. In this case, you know, we do not see any problem from that. Secondly, they told you there is no um, drinking and smoking is already banned for the children. The clear distinction here, from as my partner already pointed out, those, those, uh, those consequences of those uh, sexual intercourse is materialized in the short term. This is an uh, extension brought in by entire um, closing, uh, closing government. Because they feel the pain or they even unnecessary pregnancy is materialized in the short term. This is an extension. In this occasion, should they have the capacity to calculate sure. in this uh, specific knowledge? In this case, so compared to that, drinking or the smoking is totally different because those consequences, those harm of, of the drinking or smoking it is, it is materialized in the long term for after oh, 30 right. years or 20 years. That's why this is a clear distinction from there. In this occasion, that, um, they have the capable actor to consent. Second, and thirdly, the uh, closing opposition told you that we do not have a, uh, those, those, they are the ones who are in the process of the education. That's why we should ban this action. Firstly, it is, it is not the educational um, uh, uh, purpose to teach those, um, um, those public, uh, publishing, whatever my business, because those really, uh, they are the ones who already consented to a certain extent, even in the process of the education, in the uh, occasion. For example, in, uh, we already told you that the information, they are available. It's so large in this specific context. In this occasion, we don't see any problem. But, so th that's why we already, they have the capacity to consider. That's why, for example, they choose the school, for example, high school, the consequence material soon compared to other, uh, other options, for example, making contract or etc. Et and also they have to choose the surgery, whether or not they choose to conduct the surgery, for example. Even the, those surgery is so dangerous, they have the consented actor to begin with. That's why they have the consent, uh, consent is valid. My second issue about uh, why sure. sexual intercourse is so important. From the beginning, um, the, yes. You're always talking about consent, consent, consent. We've already shown you the most important actor here are those pedophiles and those yeah. who are bad to these children who are not allowing consent have only fabricated consent. This that is a dissipative idea. Uh, 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 I'm going to talk about later in the South issue. So my second issue, why is sexual intercourse is so important? From the beginning, opening option uh, said that this is against the religious factor. They are always regret those kind of things. It's a Christian or those conservative Islam person. We never force the children to go to the sexual intercourse because if they, we already told them the rational actor to consent these actions in this location, they totally down down the case. So, thirdly, uh, secondly, we told you from the side of the closing government, why sexual intercourse is so important Ma to maintain the relationship? Because they have the self-recognition between each other, they show their secret, um, sacred part of the uh, uh, part of the body, or etc. Et response from them, they build already trust the first time. We need the first trust to continue their relationship. This is the extension from body by the closing government in this occasion. For example, they must overcome the cover. For example, they have the more difficulty. For example, uh, 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 for example, the job application will etc. Et so to uh, uh, to overcome those difficulties, which is in the process of the relationship, those sexual intercourse is necessary to build the further trust. They never engage with the core issue in this way. The main third issue about social and uh, social norm, how this proposal change. So, uh, uh, so this response from the, their side of the house is like this: pedophilia always abuse their power. Firstly, they are already uh, uh, consented, uh, conceded the fact that they have to build the uh, trust. In the first place, in this process, we say those bad people, a pedophile, is already screened out because those um, children, are, uh, for example, meet uh, meet frequently, for example, and also they uh, they uh, uh, they 
build the relationship to certain extent in the process of getting consent to go to the sexual intercourse in this process. In this case, they know those pedophilia is never ever occurred to begin with. Obviously, those bad pedophilia is always screened out. Secondly, we said, if that is the case, they abuse, so abuse, uh, again, we are okay to punish those pedophilia to begin with. Um, uh, if those children are injured, for example, in this occasion, we do not see any problem. But on the other hand, we, what we brought you on the table is quite simple. They go this proposal sending the strong message towards society. The, those sexual intercourse to love the minors is normal. It, it is at the same, those different sexual pre uh, preference is the same as us, uh, for example, to heterosexual relationship uh, uh, within the adult, it says. They, in this occasion, those minorities, it's easy to show their identity. They are recognized, have, they, have, uh, they, uh, they have a sexual relationship between the mi uh, adult and minor. For example, that's why we see the gay marriage. For example, if, if gay marriage is legalized, those, those gays have can easily show their identity to through the public, etc. For example, that's why, for example, in the country, in the conservative community, those gay, gay, uh, gay or those sexual minorities is still suffering from their, uh, their, uh, their, their status, etc. That's why this proposal is the only way to recognize those sexual minorities. That's what we best propose. Thank you. Watching Gossip Girl. So I think how fancy, how wonderful it is to have sex. Then my peer group also had this kind of same affection, same fantasy towards this kind of beautiful experience. Then suddenly one day, one man, or or already mature enough or strong enough, come into my life, oh my and it's a pretty cool thing to have intercourse with that. We say, Madam Speaker, the major group of this discussion is about those people. It's about this group of people who have this kind of power asymmetry, have limited information to the sex, having limited capacity in making judgments towards their sexual life. We think the government side are too idea in terms of picturizing the, uh, the situation for us. They assume Man. that social norms are changing, assume that every individual has the same capacity in making the judgment and choosing the sexual life they want to be with. We say they lack of the enough sufficient evidences for the group that I have Man. mentioned before. Secondly, they they talking um secondly, they, they're talking about the sexual intercourse is a kind of self-recognition that is very essential for the progress of the relationship. However, Madam Speaker, as my partner already told you that the essential for a relationship is about trust, the solid emotional foundation. Yeah. First, you have this kind of trust. You want wow. to proceed the procedure into a next step. Then you show your private uh, place in the, of your body to the partner. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use this part of that to exchange for trust. What kind here, of people here. begging you, consistent, consistently asking oh you God. to show that part? Of course, people have bad intention or people simply want <coughs> sex towards that. So we think that those are the problems that failed to address by the proposition side. So defend for yourself. Man, if the problem is in fraud, right? Why is it not okay for the, the, the girl or whatever victim to bring this case based on fraud? Why is it necessary to bring this case totally based on the age itself? Please explain to us. I have to say there is no high moral ground for them. It's too ideal for them. Well, imagine that you are the one, you don't know what real sex is, and this person feeds you about the information. Here, sex here, is here, okay. Fraud. You don't know you are being fraud when you are being, being brainwashed by this group of people. So we think even if when the people are trying to tell the existing jury and judges that might protect you from 
being hurt by that, we still think there is an essential thing that we want to protect for them. Then moving on to my clashes. First is about the capacity of those individuals, whether they have the real, real uh, mental uh, judgment, ability to judge and to choose for themselves. Second, is it necessary for our government to offer the protection that is necessary for them? So, firstly, about the capacity to make judgment. The, the, the reason pr provided by the proposition side is simply like this. We have more information and we have new, um, the new teaching methods because this kind of exposure of more information have gradually led to the some kind of change of so social norms that people are more open to accept. However, as my husband already told you that, imagine that you have to face it. You are still <coughs> under the guide, uh, guideline of your parents. You are still, still face, uh, facing the pressure from all kinds of religious groups. You have all, all facing the traditional ideas coming from your elderly parents, elderly relatives. We don't think this that or over to that extent to that. Secondly, about the information, exposure doesn't equal to acquisition. Even if you have you you have the exposure to about those sexual intercourses, about the uh, even maybe applied by pornography, we don't think that you really understand core essence of uh, sexual intercourse. Secondly, we don't think those media, the picture they have presented to you, are the real picture to us that. Most of the time, the, the pictures tell you how enjoyable having sex is. They don't tell you how painful it is that, of course, because they want to target wow. and reach a wide audience to sell their products. This is essentially designed by the nature of those uh, pornography corporations and uh, all kinds of stuff. So we don't think this kind of information and it can be the justification for those individuals to do that. Secondly, they mentioned about the teaching methods are changing. Well, why? Well, th because the teaching methods are training you to think about those issues. But face it, Madam Speaker, we 18 years old, most of the time we are living in a school, primary, secondary, uh, and high school. We are learning mathematics, we are learning English, we are learning literature. Well, we are discussing, we are discussing how to solve that equation. We are discussing how to solve that chemistry problem, how to solve that experiment problem. Well, even if some institutions provide some kind of moral education, to trigger your thoughts with sex. We don't think that essentially the most important part of the school. We don't think that they have provided a comprehensive social understanding to, to those things. That is divided, that is dependent on the teaching faculties provided by institutions, set, or also by the people's acquisition abilities in terms of grasping those knowledges. So we think definitely the capacity to make the judgments has a big question mark in that. It's just not, not idea presented by that. Secondly, we're talking about protection. Why age matters? Even if they say that, well, many people have more exposure than more involved. Yes, we agree. There are certain group of people that are juniors that are close to the grass was that. But the problem is that capacity differs from individual to individual. Yeah. Well, like for, so for the children who are not really like the school, who not really like following instructions from the textbooks, they um, they don't they can they they, they they cannot really grasp the core essence as those genius group. So we say it is this group of people that don't have those kind of rational thinking that we should pay special attention to. They're the most vulnerable group that our law should have special stress towards that. Moreover, as the power asymmetry and more of uh, important thing mentioned by the partner have already told you, there's a highly possibility that those adults try to uh, take advantage of the innocence of the limited experience, the limited recognition, uh, cognitive uh, capacity, and brainwashing them, feed them information that sex is okay. So that is why necessary our law needs to provide essential, uh, essential protection to us that. Then certainly talking about the impact. As my husband told you, that when we assume you're watching those TVs, watching those videos, you know how cool it is and how safe it is. You never think of that. The consequences generated by that might be a single mother family, might generate it for abortion, might facing the pressure, the discrimination in the long term by the other social groups in the society. Those are the things that an individual fails to have the real, uh, 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 real sightedness to see. Madam Speaker, please vote for us. Thank you very much to everyone. I invite all of you to talk.